After Napoleon was defeated in Russia in 1812, Russia formed an alliance with Great Britain and Austria and Prussia to defeat Napoleon once and for all. This alliance is successful the following year, 1813, and a year after that, 1814, Napoleon abdicates as ruler of France and really as ruler of most all of Europe. So the leaders of Europe needed to get together at a conference in order to figure out what the map of Europe was going to look like now that Napoleon was gone and France was no longer in control. And now that Napoleon and all of his relatives who had been the kings across Europe were now gone as well. The Congress of Vienna had three main goals. First and foremost, they wanted to redraw the map so that there was a balance of power in order to prevent France from annexing other territories in the future. They also wanted to turn back the clocks to what Europe had looked like before 1972 when France became a republic and Napoleon had come to power. And then thirdly, this is the dawn of a new century. It's a very exciting century with all the technological advances of the Industrial Revolution. And the leaders of Europe really wanted to make sure that they could create a lasting peace. They were hoping to create a new world order that didn't involve fighting, but it actually used diplomacy to settle disputes. Now, there were several key players who took the lead. Okay? We really weren't sure who was going to be ruling, but there were certainly royal families and the ministers of government that got together to sort of determine the direction of the new country. And it should come as no surprise that the prime minister of Austria, Clemens von Metternich, because Vienna is in Austria and that's where this meeting was taking place, was one of the key players. Um, the other countries who were in an alliance with, you know, against uh, France and were responsible for defeating Napoleon were also key players. So we had representatives from Russia and Prussia and Great Britain and Austria, that original alliance that defeated France. It may be a little bit surprising that France itself was represented. Talleyrand ensured that even though the purpose of the Congress of Vienna was to limit France's power, that, you know, that he still made sure that it wasn't limited by too much. And in fact, with the five of them, often Talleyrand cast a deciding vote. But the reality is the meeting is being held in Austria and the leader of the Congress of Vienna, the most influential voice by far, was the Austrian minister Clemens von Metternich. Now, the meeting does get briefly interrupted in 1815 when Napoleon makes a comeback. The alliance gets together again and this time defeats him for the last time, the final time, at Waterloo in 1815. And then the Congress of Vienna resumes. A lot of people call the Congress of Vienna the Dancing Congress because there were so many royals that had been invited. And a lot of these royals really were interested in introducing their princesses to other countries, princes, and vice versa. And there were lots of parties and operas and ballets and waltzes that were written just for the participants at the Congress of Vienna. Lots and lots of dancing that would go late into the evening. So when the map drawing session would take place at 9 a.m. the following morning after a long night of dancing, you know, these are the people that would show up. So lots of people were in attendance and there was drama and affairs and it was lavish and all kinds of interesting gossip comes out of it. But these were the guys that were doing the work. And what they decided to do was basically deprive France of its empire. So to take back the land that France had annexed. You'll notice that the um, Dutch Republic was united with the Netherlands, so we now have the Kingdom of the Netherlands, so there's no Belgium, Holland, and Luxembourg, it's one country. Norway and Sweden became one country, Switzerland becomes neutral, Finland belongs to Russia, and there's other changes we can go over tomorrow.